So you're a bloke who is losing their hair and you're thinking, is the only thing I can take finasteride or dutasteride? But what about the potential side effects? Or you might be taking finasteride and dutasteride and you've only gotten so far. Or you're taking finasteride and dutasteride and you're getting the side effects and you want to look for something to replace it, but you're worried about going backwards. Well, enter into the world GT20029, the latest hair loss drug for topical application coming out of China from Kintor Pharmaceuticals. Could this be the next best thing in the hair loss world? Or are there some potential hurdles that we need to consider before we get our hopes up? So if we haven't already met, I'm Dr. Jonathan Hopkirk, Sydney-based hair loss doctor and co-founder of Levels of You, an Australian-based hair restoration company that treats patients on a daily basis across Australia. Now, I'm also someone that's gone through my own hair loss journey, which is why I am particularly passionate about helping people have more more understanding around what hair loss conditions there are but also the various things that can help them on their journey so from today's video i hope you get a good understanding around what this new ingredient gt20029 is how it compares to other things on the market and then i will as always give you an opportunity to get a hold of our medical boards free ebook which has over 70 years of experience pumped into it and it'll give you a great understanding around the various types of hair loss conditions and all the various evidence-backed things that you can do to support your hair so if you want to get your hands on that simply watch to the end and follow the prompts all right let's crack into it so as always these sorts of topics come with lots of questions and comments so if you have comments or you have commentary obviously as positive as possible is great put it into the comment section and I will do a Q&A on this in the coming weeks because it continue to keep this discussion dynamic. But let's jump into this by first understanding how GT20029 works. So to better understand how GT20029 works on the hair follicle as well as understanding how DHT works on the hair follicle, I've created this little Kermita model. We call it a Kermita in New Zealand or sweet potato outside of New Zealand. So this little sweet potato is our hair follicle. So this is the hair follicle and this is the androgen receptor. Now in predisposed individuals, this androgen receptor will bind DHT. So DHT is a derivative of testosterone. It's a hormone that has a great affinity for the androgen receptor. So it binds the androgen receptor and in predisposed individuals, this binding will lead to this follicle regressing over time in a nutshell. Now, if you want more information around how that happens, watch this video here. But for today, all we need to understand is when DHT binds the androgen receptor in predisposed individuals, this follicle will regress over time. So as you can probably appreciate, we want to mitigate just how much of this DHT binding occurs. Now, in, this, in the stock standard traditional sense, what happens is people get put on finasteride or dutasteride, which we know can have a systemic effect as well, and it reduces DHT levels throughout the body, so less of it can bind to the androgen receptor. Now, GT... 20029, I'm going to call it GT for short from here just to save my tongue getting twisted. GT acts completely differently and without having systemic effects. So how does it work? So GT is used in a topical solution which is applied to the scalp twice a week. And what happens is rather than reducing DHT levels peripherally or at the scalp, what it does is it has this fascinating technology called Protac. Now, if you want to get into the depths of biochemistry, that means proteolysis targeting chimera. I did biochemistry papers in uni, but that was years ago, so I'm not going to get into the absolute geeky breakdown of it uh, because it's just quite complex, but I want to simplify it as much as possible. So what it essentially does is you have GT2, 0029 and what it does is when it has influence on the follicle what it does is it actually puts this little ubiquitin so this little flag into the androgen receptor so when this little ubiquitin protein is bound onto the androgen receptor it then signals for that particular receptor to be 
basically degraded by way of this proteasome molecule. So this complex sees that you have this situation in which this receptor has been flagged to be degraded. So this complex is then broken down. It is broken down not forever, but for a period of about 10 days. So the scientists at Kintour Pharmaceuticals have said that that process will be effective for about 10 days, of which it's why it's a bi-weekly application. So it's not an it's not a permanent solution which is a very important thing to consider and understand so this androgen receptor is then degraded so dht can no longer bind to the androgen receptor on the hair follicle so your dht levels can be as high as anything and it's just not going to bind to that receptor because it's not there so very unique in its approach how is this different from other anti-androgens or androgen receptor blockers or DHT blockers. So we spoke about how DHT blockers like dutasteride and finasteride work. They are mitigated peripherally or even at the level of the scalp if you apply them topically. But what about things like spironolactone? So we'll take the ubiquitin protein out. What happens when you have this androgen receptor that is open and you have spironolactone? So spironolactone is a blood pressure medication. It's a diuretic. It has wide uses within medicine. So often used in people like poly, who have polycystic ovarian syndrome. But what spironolactone does is it comes along and it binds to the androgen receptor. And then because it is blocking that receptor, it means that DHT can't bind to that receptor as well so therefore it, it antagonizes uh, the effect of dht at the receptor however it can also do that on androgen receptors that we don't want to influence and so then it can have feminizing effects and then it can have potential side effects peripherally so that's spironolactone what about biclutamide well biclutamide has a similar effect so this is originally a prostate drug and what happens is it binds to the androgen receptor. And again, that means that DHT can't then come in and bind into the DHT receptor antagonizes. What about pyrolutamide? So pyrolutamide, obviously still in its research phases, not completely approved yet for use, but this is another one to have come out of Kintour Pharmaceuticals. This is a selective androgen receptor modulator and what it does is it binds to the androgen receptor and it stops then DHT binding to that receptor. So again, it antagonizes the receptor, but it does so locally. What about ciproin acetate? So ciproin acetate, same thing. It comes in, binds the androgen receptor and means DHT cannot bind the androgen receptor. So you start to get an understanding that all of these other drugs or ingredients work by blocking the androgen receptor, which means that DHT can no longer bind into the androgen receptor and have the effect on the follicle. But how GT20029 is different is it degrades that receptor altogether. So you can have high DHT levels circulating throughout the blood and it has no effect on that follicle. So it's very, very, very exciting uh, technology it's very very exciting as a hair loss drug because those who are having you know side effects from things like finasteride or dutasteride or those that might be only getting so far with finasteride or dutasteride or those who don't want to even touch finasteride or dutasteride would be able to use a drug like this and it will be something that will degrade that androgen receptor and it is theorized to not have then any systemic side effect risk so far in the trials, it's been shown that there's been no side effects systemically, no DHT related side effects, so no libido loss, erectile dysfunction, these sorts of things. But they are still in the phase three trials, which next week I'm going to jump into the breakdown of the findings from the phase two and phase three trials that we, you know, the data that we have from these trials thus far. So that is how GT20029 works. That is how it compares to other drugs that are on the market or on the pipeline. If you want to get your hands on our medical boards ebook, simply like and subscribe and message me at jonathan at levelsofview.com and I'll get that sent over to you right away. If you enjoyed today's video, please put your comments in the comment box. 
I like to use sort of models because I think it's sometimes it makes it easier for us to understand. And the, you know, the ProTech technology is not exactly simple. So it's good to break this down. I look forward to bringing another video to you next week. Have a great week. Look forward to seeing you next week. Cheers.